Hello and welcome back. If you're new here, I'd appreciate it if you'd uh, hit that subscribe button down below, like the video, and we're gonna get into some track and field tips. Some things that I've enjoyed using, um, some things that I've tried, and just kind of talk about some things to change up your photography game if you're covering indoor track and field. So, one of the biggest things I would say to keep an eye out for when you are shooting indoor track and field is keep an eye on your backdrop. What is behind your athlete when you're framing up the shot? It could be very, very hard to get a clean background in indoor track and field because you have spectators that usually circle the whole track or the event. And then you also have, you know, they got the school usually has trash cans. You got random pillars and lights, banners from the school that you're visiting or the school that you work for. And then it could just have very random things in the background. So keep an eye out for what's going to be in the backdrop of your photo. I say this because last week or the week before I was shooting high jump and I was looking at my photos and the high jump is jumping over the pole and also underneath them where their back was arching was one of the student aides that was helping with high jump to reset pole after every jump if it was knocked off. So it was very distracting. I didn't want to use those photos or send them to the school to use because I'm sure they wouldn't care. Um, they're more looking at the athlete, but as a photographer, you need to keep an eye out on what's on your backdrop and what's behind you, um, behind the athlete. And at that moment, luckily for high jump, I move around a lot. I shoot from a lot of different angles. They go three times for each pull. Um, they get three fails. So I was able to get that athlete in a good location, but it still was a bummer to have that one angle have a distracting backdrop. So that's one thing I would say to keep an eye out for. Another thing to try out is to get low. This works in most sports. Shooting lower in most sports is gonna be better. You get a, a really cool um, point of view that most viewers don't get because most viewers are sitting up in the stands looking down or looking at eye level. But if you're getting down on the turf, down on the track, if you could shoot lower, you're gonna have a better, um, it's gonna be a better looking photo, or at least I think it's gonna be a better looking photo if you're shooting lower up into the athlete. Plus, if you're shooting lower, you get a good angle for hurdles, or you could shoot through the hurdles at them at their starting block um, as they're running towards you. If you're shooting a little lower, not at eye level, it just looks more pleasing or at least I think so. So that's something I would do is shoot lower if you have the option for whatever event you're shooting for indoor track. Also, I'm probably gonna get the question, I didn't plan on covering this, but some, some people are probably gonna ask me about what lens do I typically use or what lens should you look into getting. A 7200, at least with Canon and Nikon or any other camera system that offers a 7200, is going to be a great start. A 7200 f2.8 is going to be a good start for every sport that you shoot. Um, you could make it work with any sport, I would assume. It's came in very handy for me over the years, so I would suggest that. But luckily with track, you can get away with a wide angle lens in some events. If you're able to get closer, like high jump, um, if you can get close enough to the mat and shoot up with a wide angle, you can get a really unique shot. So using wide angles is another tip I would say. If you have the option to use a wide angle lens, you can get really, really creative with your shots, getting low and getting some motion blur by going with a slower shutter speed. Um, that's another tip. You know, try slower shutter speeds, show some of that motion, um, follow the runner as they run by with a slower shutter and get that blur. It'll take trial and error until you um, find the right shutter speed and settings to get them going by, but still have a sharp, somewhat sharp face in the photo. So trying a slower shutter speed using wide angle lenses um, when possible to emphasize a, um, a sprinter or a hurdle, just to show some motion in those photos to show the action. So with that said, try to take photos with less distracting backdrops, get lower, try wide angle lenses, 
and try um, slower shutter speeds to get creative. So those are just some tips that I would say to try out with indoor track and field to get better photos if you are looking to change things up. With that said, I appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe and I will see you all next time. Oh, 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 oh,